In this video, I'm going to go over a few different ways in which you can create a satin stitch um, that kind of follows this right here, this red. And there are a number of ways to do it. There's a number of tools you can use. So we'll just go over the differences between them. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab first the regular satin tool. And with the regular satin tool, you go around the edge and then you have to work your way back around. And it's just important to um, always, um, you'll see, I'll go one direction, I'll come back the other. So I'm going to just click right here. I'm gonna hold down shift on my keyboard so I can create a straight line. So I'm just holding down shift. It helps me create that straight path. It just makes everything a lot cleaner. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna come right close to it, but I'm not gonna click directly on that point but it's gonna be right next to it. It's just something that I do. So this is, I've defined the inner part here, and now I need to define the outer part for the satin stitch because you define one side, you def define both sides at the same time. So I'm gonna come here, since I went around this way, and now I'm gonna to come to the other side here. I'm gonna click here. And I'm going to hold down shift and I have to go back the opposite direction. That's what you have to do when you're working with something like this, that um, the path kind of goes into itself. There's no um, start end and, you know, another edge. So we have to go all the way around on the inner part. And then we have to work our way back around for the outer piece. And you can see that I put that, um, point right there and I'm going to come in now and I'm going to go back to that beginning point. I'll click there and I'll right mouse click and now you'll see that once I right mouse click it's asking me um, for what angles I want to use. You can see that by the, the black dot next to the plus symbol and so here is when I'm going to come in and I'm going to put my angle lines and the first thing I do is I just come into the corners and do those first. Um, because I want to make sure that those are done correct. And I do need to do one on this side too because this is kind of split up in a way. So sometimes I'll just grab it like this um, and then I'll just modify it a little bit. And now I'm going to keep going with that. So I'm going to come in here and about at this point I'll draw a straight one. Same thing over here so that it kind of angles in and out of the corner but it doesn't do it extreme, meaning it doesn't keep curving all the way through this. Um, so I'll put one right here, one right here. And I'm just kind of helping the software know how to work with this satin stitch here. So let me put this one right there. Now I'm going to right mouse click now that I have those in place. I don't need to put them in the middle here because it's going to do it straight from this um, angle line to this one. It's going to keep it the same direction. So I'm going to right mouse click. And now I'm just going to define the start point and end point. So let's just say I'm going to start here. And then now you can see it has the red dot. So I can say I want to end it up here. And now it's going to automatically create that satin. So I can change the color of this to something that's more similar to a red. And that's how you use the regular satin tool. Now when I'm doing a shape like this that is very um, well defined, meaning it's just a you know kind of a rectangle or a square where there is no curves or anything, I like to utilize the classic satin stitch tool for these because you'll see that when I do that it's a little bit faster. Now if something has a lot of curves, um, I do like to utilize the regular satin tool that I just did. But let me just show you really quick. I just deleted that one. I'm gonna come up here and choose the classic satin tool. And I'm gonna do it very similar, but with the classic satin, you kind of define both sides at the same time. So it's a what we call a um, point counterpoint tool. So you click a point and then you go to the other side. And then I can come in here if I want and I can um, kind of help guide it, kind of like where those angle lines were for the previous one. I can do the same thing here. I could hold down shift. Nah, I can't do shift with this tool because I'm doing point counterpoint. But you can see that my cursor has that 
crosshairs attached to it. So I'm going to try to line it up with this point. So when I come over here, I'm going to make sure it's lined up with the previous one. I'll click and now I got to go to the other side. Same thing. I'm going to try to line those up and then I'm going to come into this corner and then do right here. And I'll just show you the difference here. Um, I, I would generally kind of put one right here, but I'll go all the way down and without putting those angle lines in there and I'll go all the way across without doing it. And you'll just be able to see the difference in doing it this way. So now I need to come back. I'm going outside, inside, outside, inside. So I'm going to come back up to here. I'm going to get really close to that other one. And then I'm going to come up here to this one and try to get it straight with one below it. And then now I'm going to right mouse click. And the difference with this tool is I don't have to go back in and add angle lines or start point end point because wherever I click, to create the shape, that's where the angle lines are placed. So if I go to the shape edit, you'll see that an angle line was placed right here and here because I actually clicked right there. But you'll notice that there isn't one in this section or this section only on these angles or the corners because that's the only place that I clicked. So the main difference here is that this one's going to start going straight up and down from this point. If you look at this one right here, it's going at this angle. It takes it quite a while before it gets to where the stitches go straight up and down. And then it starts angling again into this corner. And it's okay to do this. It's just, um, it won't look quite as even when it stitches out. And this looks really clean on the on the screen but you'll get a better looking um, satin stitch if you kind of come in and you create these angle lines that are fairly close to the corner but not too close like I might even come out with this one a little bit more here and I can always add more angle lines if I need to and I can just right click on the line here add inclinations and I can click and drag them where I need them um, so that one I didn't get straight up and down, but this is just to kind of show you that you can do this. Um, and once I get them in place, I just right mouse click and it updates it. And you can see that that's a lot more straight up and down in this area. It starts angling into the corner. So that's how you can use that tool. Um, but I'll tell you that a lot of times now I'm creating it as artwork. So um, and with the rectangle, it's really easy because I can come and grab the rectangle tool and I can click and drag right here over to this side. And then I can create another one from this top left to the bottom right. And I have now both of those pieces here and all I have to do is combine them together. So I can click on the combine tool here or I can just right click and choose combine. And now you'll see that that's just one object. If I fill it in with color, you'll see it's that blue color here. And what I can do at this point is just come down. I like to choose to do the satin. Um, if I do auto satin, it will automatically put in angle lines, but you'll notice that it does a good job going around this corner here and then it straightens it out. Same with here, but look at this corner up here. This corner is um, a lot different. It, the stitches are going straight up to there and coming down. So I would have to do a little bit of editing with this. It created the split line there. I'd have to delete it. I would have to change these angles. And that's why I typically don't utilize the auto satin. Instead, what I do is I get it back to this artwork that I have that's combined and I come right into the satin tool and I go to convert it to a satin. And now it's ready for me to put my angle lines in, as you can see. So I can just quickly come in now and just create these angle lines and put them into the positions where I want them. And it's created a really clean piece of um, artwork. So um, I accidentally double clicked there, but I'm just going to generate this now. And you can see that that's a pretty quick and easy way to create 
a satin. Um, now, if it wasn't like a, just a rectangle or a circle, you can still use the artwork tool to generate this and you would just grab your artwork tool and, and you just kind of define the define one side of an object so I can hold down shift but let's say that this one um, did have like a little bend to it like it, it came up and around I could come in and I could create you know this little curved shape here and I can close this by clicking the close symbol. So I just created one line there and now I could come in and create another. And I'll do something kind of similar to it where I'll keep it kind of close to this other one. Not trying to make it perfect by any means, but just to show you that you can create, um, I'm gonna close this, you know, two pieces of artwork, select them, combine them together and convert it to a satin. So now I could come in here and I could just uh, put in my angle lines and go around here, right click a couple times, and you'll see that it generates that shape. And this one I could play around with it and get the angle lines a little bit better here because it, it does kind of go pretty sharp or it does kind of lead quite a while into the other angle but those are the different ways that you can create the satin border now an object like this too I could utilize the steel stitch um, I generally don't because I like to have control over the corners um, but that is a tool you can use because it's the same width from one side to the other all the way through. And just to show you, I'll just grab the steel stitch and I just have to find kind of where the center is here. I can hold down shift as I kind of go around here and um, this will just help make it easier for that. I'll close it and when I close the shape it's going to generate that steel stitch where I have control over the border. But you can see that the corners it does something different with those and it's not the way that I would handle the corners so that's why I don't utilize the steel stitch for a rectangle like this. But I hope that that helps um, show you know kind of the different ways that you can create that satin border and um so just wanted to share that to see if that might help somebody trying to figure out how to best approach doing a satin border